Thanks for tuning in today to Worship with Hope Online. I'm Gerald, one of the pastors here at Hope, and whether this is your first time joining us or maybe you've been around Hope for a long time, I'm glad that you're here today. As you know, we had planned to regather this weekend, but because Riverside County moved back into the purple tier, we weren't able to do that. But the good news is so many of you have volunteered and we've gotten so prepared and we were ready to roll that as soon as we move back into the red tier, we'll be ready to go and we'll keep you updated on that. Some of you have asked, is trunk or treat still gonna happen on Halloween on Saturday, October the 31st? And it is, and uh, we need candy. Still, you can bring candy by the church office uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also, one big need that we have right now is for 10 more of you, 10 more of you to commit to just put on a costume, decorate your car a little bit, and come that night and just make a kid's night by handing out candy as they do the drive through trunk or treat. If you would do that and decorate one of your cars, you can email kevin at hopepd.org to let him know. Also, we have a new church app. All you have to do is on your app store or on the Google Play Store, uh, just search for Church Center, and then when it pops up, just put Hope in the name of the church line and Palm Desert in the city, and you'll find it, and it's really easy to get set up. You'll wanna do that. Sometime today, be sure to subscribe and like before you leave, because when you do that, it helps more people discover the hope of Jesus and get to experience the services that we have here online. And now, thanks again for being here, and let's sing our first song together. I fix my eyes upon the cross I'm reaching out with all I've got I'm letting go to start again I need your love, that's why I'm here Waiting outside my life it calls So while I'm here I'll give my heart You are my peace within the storm Here at the cross I find my
500 years ago, a German monk named Martin Luther started a protest that exploded into a worldwide movement. At that time, Europe lived in the shadow of the Roman Catholic Church, and that was more like an empire than a church. It crowned and cast down kings, and used its dominance to keep people in the darkness of superstition. That sounds pretty unfamiliar, but in some ways, Luther's day was very much like our own. Just like today, everyone had an opinion about the Bible, even though almost no one actually read it. Like so many of us, they were trusting the thought leaders and tastemakers of their own day to tell them what was in the Bible and whether or not to believe it. Luther was one of the very few people actually reading the Bible, and what he found was earth-shattering. Even though he was a monk, Luther hated the God of the Bible. But when he studied it, the world around him began to make sense. God made sense. The significance of Jesus became clear to him. He discovered the answer to his deepest questions. How could evil be overcome? Specifically, how could his own evil, his own sin, be dealt with? Protestant Reformation is a story of transformation. A transformation from hate to love, from slavery to freedom, and from blind faith to a glorious discovery of the truth in Jesus Christ. If you've ever found yourself lost or in an area of town you know that you shouldn't be in, having what's called street smarts could save your life. I don't know about you, but what I see and hear right now with everything that's going on around us is people are feeling a little lost, unsure, and unsettled. If any time we need street smarts, it's right now because they can help us know what's going on around us and how we should act and what we should do. It gives us a roadmap through the dangers of life and a way out. Well, over the last several weeks, we've been unpacking a street smart out of the book of Proverbs that will help us live longer, more satisfied, and a better life. You can check them out on our YouTube channel at Hope Palm Desert anytime that you want. And by the way, if you've never taken a good look at Proverbs before, it's like Twitter. Hundreds of short tweets, pithy and memorable statements and observations that communicate the most profound theological and practical truths you've ever seen. Tweets on pride, anger, money, relationships, success, advice, and so much more. The one thread that connects all of them is wisdom. Solomon, the author of Proverbs said, nothing will stand in your way if you walk wisely and you will not stumble when you run. To get wisdom, there's something that we need to understand. And that is wisdom is not a what. Wisdom is a who. Solomon said again, there are friends who pretend to be friends but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Now look at that phrase again. God gave you Jesus as a benefit because through him you will have wisdom. Jesus can be seen through these tweets in Proverbs because Jesus is Proverbs lived out in the flesh. One of the most practical questions that you can ask yourself when you need wisdom is, what would Jesus do? Or what wisdom would Jesus give me right now? I'm worried because I might get COVID. What wisdom would Jesus give you right now? Well, he said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world, which simply means if he is powerful enough to overcome the world forces, his, he's powerful enough to take care of you and whatever you're going through. Another question could be, I'm scared because the person that I want to win the election might lose, and I don't know what's going to happen next. Listen to me right now. First step, turn off the news. Stay off Facebook. Quit hanging around with friends that are adding to your fear. 
Take a break for 24 hours. Just try this. Go outside, play with your kids, read a book, do a kind act for one of your neighbors. But you have to make a decision to get up and a decision to change your input. What wisdom would Jesus give you right now? Well, he said, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Great words. In other words, change your focus and fear will flee. I had a person ask me this question. Who do you think Jesus would vote for? A good question. Both parties mention God and Jesus. In fact, I can even come up with a sermon that would demonstrate the Republican platform is in sync with the teachings of Jesus. But I could also create a sermon that shows that the Democrat platform and their values are in sync with the teachings of Jesus. See, when you interpret the words of Jesus through your political filter, then you see what you want to see. But what would happen if we tried to answer that question? What side would Jesus be on or who would Jesus vote for by flipping the filters around? If we use the Jesus filter first and his wisdom and our specific political filter behind it, what would we get? Well, if we're being honest and unbiased, our answer would be Jesus did not come to take sides. He came to take over. See, Jesus came to introduce the kingdom of God to earth, the kingdom of God's values, the upside down kingdom, where those with wealth and those with power leverage their wealth and power and resources for those that have less power and less resources. The kingdom of God, where the king laid down his life for his subjects rather than demanding his subjects lay down their lives for him. The kingdom of God that was so broad and inclusive that he said that everybody's invited to participate in it. The kingdom of God will always in some detail and some level conflict with the kingdom of men and conflict with your political party and the platform of your political party and even your political candidates. There's always going to be tension during these times. And this is why it is absolutely foolish for the church to ever be divided over a candidate or over a political party. Because at the end of the day, no political party is probably going to line up with the kingdom values of Jesus. Although each party has a little bit of it, even though it's difficult for some of us to acknowledge. But again, it's foolish for us to be divided because we're supposed to be the kingdom people first and political people second. Now, I know that this can be difficult to do, but knowing what's at stake will hopefully motivate us to live it out. Let me take you back in time when Jesus is with his disciples and he just finished his last supper with them. Soon after this, their time is going to get crazy as Jesus will be arrested and crucified. And all those that follow him are going to get worried, scared, and confused. Their world is going to get very unstable very fast. Jesus prays for them and also for all those who will follow him in the future. And I believe that this prayer is the greatest prayer in the Bible. He says this, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. See, no Christian, no church should be divided because of a political party or candidate or any issue for that matter. Because the world is watching and will believe or not believe in Jesus based on how we love one another. Now, you might be thinking, Rick, that's just so naive. Do you really think it's going to really make that much of a difference? Well, remember this. Once upon a time, there were a handful of Jesus followers crushed between an empire and the temple. And they gave to Caesar what was Caesar's and they gave to God what was God's, which was their lives. And now the emperor or the empire is no more. 
The temple is no more. Rome's most famous emperor is nothing but a footnote in the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Kingdoms come, kingdoms go. Empires rise, empires fall. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and nothing is ever going to stop it. And he did. And we've been invited to be a part of it. Our responsibility, especially in the season like this, is to show our divided nation and our divided world what it looks like and that it's possible to disagree politically, but to love unconditionally. Why we pray for unity because at Calvary, at the cross, we lost our right to do anything less than that. See, Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Can we do that? Can we trust in God right now over our emotions and fears? Can we trust the Jesus promise that he will never leave us or forsake us? Can we trust that whoever wins this election, that our foundation is built on Jesus and him alone? Can we show love and respect to the person of the opposite political party, even though we may disagree with them? I hope we can. I believe we need to. I want you to listen to this story by Remy as he found wisdom in not a what, but a who. <laughs> right in the center? When this movie by the name of Bad Boys came out, which was directed by Michael Bay. That was the first movie I remember seeing where there were two heroes who looked like me, and they weren't playing thugs or gangsters or drug dealers, but instead they were playing heroes who we were essentially running, gunning, and saving the day. A year later, Michael Bay's second film, The Rock, came out. And that was the first time I was exposed to Navy SEALs. And I was just blown away by this portrayal of men who were coming out of the water and, and going into this uh, place to go sacrifice themselves to save others. That really resonated with me. And I thought, if I was to ever turn my life around, that's what I would do. Ever since I was young, I always wanted to control things. When I would want something, I would literally, if I had to, if I had to, I would run through walls to get it. I've always felt like I needed to be the one to make things happen in my life. And it's hard for me to trust people or to trust something outside of me. culture and music. I was constantly bombarded with this message that said, you're a young African-American male. You need to be a hustler, or you need to be a thug, or you need to be a player. And because I didn't have a positive male role model to tell me otherwise, to say, no, this is not what a man is. This is what a man is. I started out stealing from my mom that progressed to running scams, and that progressed to selling drugs. And when my father died, I took in any and everything that I felt would, would satisfy that paternal void that would teach me how to be a man. One day I was laying in bed and this voice, whatever it was, it was a voice to me, but it was just, it just kept on pressing upon me that I needed to join the military. I needed to get out of New York and join in the military was what I needed to do. There's not many jobs out there where you can get paid to, you know, jump out of planes and go after bad guys and protect those who couldn't protect themselves. Essentially be that guy who stood in the face of bullies and, and said, not on my watch. My acting coach, he trained in a Stella Adler. And Stella Adler was a proponent for actors getting out of their environment and traveling the world, seeing different cultures, tasting different foods, um, experiencing love, experiencing pain, experiencing all these experiences that life has to offer and then taking those experiences and cataloging them um, so that actor is able to pull from those experiences to bring the character to life. I went to uh, cold weather survival training in Alaska. And while I would walk through this wilderness, I really had time to reflect upon myself in the silence because it was completely silent out there. I began to think about how I treated my mom and how I treated people I claimed I loved. And I would think about things that I did in the past and I still yearn for that paternal presence. 
I couldn't really sleep, and then I began to have suicidal thoughts. I was at the lowest point I had ever been in my entire life. I didn't know anything about the Bible, but by a simple ounce of faith, I literally began to cry out to Jesus. Literally began to cry out to Jesus. Help me, Jesus, help me. Then I began to surround myself around Christians who didn't just read the Bible, but they actually lived the Bible. And I began to pray, and all I wanted to do was be with him and do for him and forsake that life I used to live and live this new life with him. My whole life was dramatically changed, you know. Just like I felt God tell me, you need to join the military, I felt God pressing upon me the importance of, it's time for you to get out of the military. It's time for you to move on. I have something else for you. I didn't know how I was gonna pay the bills. <laughs> I was expecting to have all these opportunities for speaking engagements, because I got into speaking. And that didn't happen. <laughs> the phones didn't ring. I began to get really nervous because I knew that I had only about six months of savings. I have a wife, and she's pregnant with our first son. We're just barely scraping through. Like, we're living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I had financial problems, and then to compound the financial problems, we had significant marriage problems, and the marriage problems were so bad, we both contemplated getting a divorce. It just didn't work out the way I expected it. And when it didn't work out, I got so frustrated. There, were, there was a point where I got mad at God. I hear you wrong. Was I supposed to get out of the military? Was I supposed to make that decision? It was silence. <laughs> it was silence. Around that time, um, I received a phone call from um, a lady who I worked with a few years prior, she uh, she cast me in a TV show by the name of The Last Ship, you know, back in 2013 for a, as, for a day of, of filming. And uh, she said, well, I've been trying to, you know, find you for this movie that starts filming tomorrow. And I was like, okay, what, what movie is that? She said, well, it's Transformers. Three, two, one, two, three, take one. I started out as a day player. Two weeks later, I was called back for three more weeks of filming. I started to get lines from the director, which was unusual for me, because I was like, wow, I'm just, just a you know, background extra. They said to me, hey, the director wants to upgrade you to a principal role. Are you available to film for the rest of production? And I said, absolutely. The director happened to be Michael Bay. <laughs> the same one who inspired me to be a SEAL. If you know, when you look at my story going from the Bronx to the military and to special operations, out of that, in a marriage, having, being a husband, being a father, and then now having a career in acting in, in the film industry, there's one word I could sum it up with is God. And so he's been with me throughout my entire life. He's seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he's used it all to bring me to where I'm at today. I don't want to force things anymore. I just want to allow God to do whatever it is that he wants to do in my life. If he wants to take me out of this acting career next week, then so be it. If he wants me to get back into the military, so be it. If he wants me to go into ministry full time, so be it. If he wants me to take up a job, I don't know, as a pilot or whatever, <laughs> so be it. Uh, because I know that his plan is better than any plan that I could ever have. And even though his plan may not make sense to me, within his plans is everything that I need and everything that is not just good for me, but good for my family as well. What an inspiring story. Can I tell you that you've got a story too and God hasn't finished writing it yet? Let this next song speak to your heart and encourage your soul. And I'll see you next week. In the darkness you were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes 
to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin king the world for the throne the endless glory to a cradle in the dirt As you were listening to the sermon today, if someone came to mind that you thought could really use what you heard today, uh, you can email it directly to them just by clicking the share button below and you can send it to them and maybe you will be impacting their lives by doing that. We are so thankful and we've said it multiple times, thank you for those of you who have been faithful in your giving. Just this week, I was talking with two other pastors at churches and one of those told me he had had to lay off staff. Another told me they were looking at their ministries and what they were gonna have to cut back on. But because you have been so faithful, we've been able to keep rolling full steam here at Hope. So thank you so much for doing that and being so faithful. We have three ways that you can give if you'd like to make a donation. You can text your gift to 84321, or you can go online at hopepd.org and you can give online there. Or of course, you can always mail your check to Hope Lutheran Church, 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. However you give, thank you for giving and let's pray for our offering now. Gracious God, thank you that we have the ability to give. Whether it's a small amount or a large amount, we are demonstrating our trust in you every time we do that. And so we thank you for that opportunity that we have right now, and we ask that you'll take our gifts and that you'll use them for the glory of Jesus and for the good of people's lives. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen. And now for the week ahead, may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We'll see you next week.